Hello and welcome to Bioactive Babe, where today I will be setting up a isopod tank for a new culture I bought at the Winnipeg Reptile Expo. I will be showing some nice beautiful shots of them later on in the film, and I'm not going to be telling you guys what species they are just until we're done selling this. So without any further ado, let's get this going. To start, I have a 2.5 gallon tank that I'm going to be making their home. You don't need to go this crazy, but the species I bought is very decorative and it's going to be more of a decorative species. As you see behind me, I have my dairy cow tank and on top of that, I will take it down, but I have armadillium. So to get started, what we're gonna use is our bioactive dirt mix. I'm running low, I need to restock. I have a completely different video that I will be uploading soon about how I mix and make my bioactive dirt, so stay tuned for that. The only reason I'm patting down the dirt right now is I want to get a good base of how I'm going to set this up as far as their terrain goes. So uh, there's one of two things I'm going to be adding into this. I'm going to be adding a piece of cork bark and I'm also going to be adding some snagma moss as well as I'm going to be adding some stones in the back. I just want to apologize for the audio as I'm using my laptop mic, but let's get started. So <clears throat> for the background, I wanted to have a slate rock look like in Kenora. So what I'm doing is I'm laying out some rocks. Now these rocks have some sent sentimental value to me as I found them in BC when I was on a family trip quite a while ago and I figured displaying them in this tank would be a nice little sentimental touch. So right now I'm just kind of laying them out and making sure that they feel, I don't know, it looks good to me. I'm just going by eye. So now that I have the rocks laid out, I'm just going to do some finishing touches, add some dirt, kind of fit them together how I really like, and then I'm going to be covering them with the substrate. The reason I'm doing this is I want to fill all of the crevices in the rocks so that they don't move as much and that the isopods can't get <clears throat> stuck in the crevices. So I'm just going to cover it with the substrate. I'm not really going to care too much because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this little brush and I'm going to play paleontologist for a moment and rediscover my beautiful little rocks like they're dino bones. So what I'm doing is I'm just sweeping them off but I'm also pressing down the dirt in some of the crevice areas to make sure that it's nice and stable. I'm also sweeping some of the dirt into the crevices kind of just making it look like the rocks have been there forever and are emerging. Alright. So now that I'm done that, I have the rocks looking exactly how I want. I'm just going to fix the substrate and make sure it's all even again now that it's swept out from under the rocks. Haha! <laughs> That's a funny joke. No, it's not. All right, I'm going to start adding the cork bark and the dead leaves. Now, the dead leaves will end up being eaten by your isopods after a while, so you will have to replace them every so often. I'm just adding in about, a, about what feels right as far as the look I'm going for. I really want this to look like a rocky kind of forest floor. I'm also adding in a tiny bit of stigma moss that is new because the stigma moss I'll be using is actually the stuff that I got with the culture. 
I found some babies in the bin, so I really don't want to throw out any of the material just in case there are some babies on there. Right now I'm adding in some springtails. I'm just tapping off charcoal from an already previous existing culture I keep. And now I'm going to add a little bit of water with some springtails mixed in. I'm going to try to put them all around the tank just to make sure that the tank has the best coverage. I would recommend springtails for any culture due to the fact that they will clean up any mold and any feces left behind by the isopods, so it's good to keep them around. I didn't like the look of the stegma moss, so I'm going to be taking it and pushing it into the crevices of the rock to really get that kind of like rocky forest flooring feeling. I might be adding some live moss to this tank later, I don't know yet because it does have a high humidity requirement and this species does not do well in high humidity. So as I'm just putting the finishing touches in here, I'm going to be adding the moss from the culture. And here we go. So this is the stegma moss from the actual culture I bought. I'm going to adjust the leaves because I didn't like how they were looking before. I really want them covering the log to make it feel like they both came from the same plant. And then I'm just going to add the moss in to really give out that rounded feel. I'm trying ever so carefully not to catch any culture in this so I don't uh, accidentally show you guys what they look like before the end of the video because stay tuned, you'll get to see what's going in here. So now that the tank is fully set up, and I've shown you all of my process, it is time to put the little critters in and introduce you to my newest colony of isopods. So I got these from Canada Species at the Reptile Expo. They are a great isopod breeder and I would recommend anyone and everyone to go to them. If you're in Canada, I'm pretty sure they'll ship outside of Canada too, but they just have a huge variety of different things like already prepped plants for bioactive, they have springtail cultures, they just have the works. So here they are. These are an armadillium species known as Kalugi Dubrovnik, or also commonly known as clown isopods. These guys cost 60 bucks for a pack of 12. So I definitely lucked out getting these bad boys. So I'm going to put most of my population that I have here into the tank. And I know I saw a couple babies on here, so I'm going to try not to leave some of those guys out. Come here, little baby. Come on, little baby. There you are. Let's introduce you to your new home. Oh, she's already off. Okay, let's see if I can get a couple more out of this. Oh, 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 oh. Don't want to fling any babies. Unnecessarily. Here you go, little buddy. Into your new home. So I was extremely lucky with this batch. Oh no! My baby! in the fact that they had already had some babies by the time I got it. And I'm just very carefully ripping the paper so that they can all 
trying to work out that it's time to go to a new home. Come on, babies. Come on, babies. Into your new home. Alright, guys. Gotta, gotta break you up. Ooh, there's quite a few in here. Be free. Go enjoy your new home. Go check it out. No, 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 no. Not me. Go check out the new home. Go check out your new home. All right, so I have introduced all the- So, isopod babies are very tiny and very cute. Yeah, he's freaking out. So, when you get a new thing of isopods, what you want to do is make sure you look out for these little guys here so that you're not throwing out any babies. <laughs>